My name is Frederick Chen. I'm currently a partner, an IP partner in the Turkey office. So I trained originally as a biochemist and my doctorate's in medical science. I was studying pH regulation in the heart. After that, I've uh, moved across into law and try to combine science with law and uh, cultural interpretation. So my area is really combining those three elements in the practice of intellectual property law and in both directions. So I'm, although I'm based in the Tokyo office, it's helping Japanese clients with their issues uh, abroad in Europe or in the US, and then international clients with their issues in Japan. In Japan, it's quite an interesting time at the moment. Uh, many people, at least in the life sciences sector, know that it's probably the second largest market after the United States. And one of the sort of recent trends has been triggered by the aging population and also the increasing costs of, of healthcare. And uh, again, many people in the field know that um, the healthcare costs have been spiraling. And so the Japanese government has been encouraging uh, use of generic drugs. And I think the most recent um, target is that uh, by 2020, 80% um, of the non-patented sector of, uh, of um, pharmaceutical products uh, should be generic products. And so this has now been an incentive for many generic companies to invest uh, in Japan. So on the corporate or commercial side, um, coming up and trying to do uh, joint ventures or licensing, it's now more worthwhile for generic companies to come in to try to knock out um, or invalidate patents. And so one of the sort of big trends we're seeing uh, within the life sciences sector is that a lot of Japanese companies, and also in particular uh, international pharmaceutical companies, Japanese subsidiaries, are having their patents um, challenged. And so although generally speaking, culturally, um, maybe the Japanese companies do not like contentious uh, litigation, they like to settle, within the life sciences field, we're finding a huge increase in the number of uh, contentious matters, uh, particularly the patent challenges. In terms of surprises or potential pitfalls for companies doing uh, litigation in Japan, so this might be a Western pharmaceutical company that's uh, involved or a Western pharmaceutical company protecting its Japanese subsidiary. Probably one of the uh, key ones is in terms of discovery or, or disclosure. Uh, typically in, in, uh, in the US or in Europe, a patentee might expect to be able to get evidence through these uh, discovery procedures. That, that procedure does not exist uh, in Japan. There's a very limited a mechanism by where you can get a, a search order, but you have to be very specific in what you uh, require. Therefore, as a, as a patentee and trying to gather evidence, it's a much higher hurdle. And I think uh, initiating patent litigation will take place at a much later stage once you've tried to gather evidence uh, from other sources. I think that the key change is really the, the shift between um, branded products and generic products. Typically, uh, in Japan at least, there's a lot of trust attached to the branded product. And so typically, again, the originated products with their, with their branded products enjoyed um, quite a, a long um, product life cycle because even if their product came off patent, the consumer, the patients, would still ask by name for the branded product. And so for the generics, it was not so uh, attractive in terms of the market. But after 2020, we'll see what happens. I think it's, it's an interesting tension because typically the Japanese uh, population like branded products. They trust uh, the originated products, and yet they're getting um, uh, sort of more information now on the generic side. So I think it's interesting to, to see how that dynamic will play out.